A reaction mechanism is a sequence of bond breaking and bond making steps. The slow step determines the rate equation for the reaction. The catalyst is not consumed in the reaction, it's reusable, and lowers the activation energy, which therefore increases the rate of reaction. An intermediate is a transient chemical species. Use these elementary steps to determine the overall reaction, identify any intermediates, determine the rate law for the overall reaction, and determine if a catalyst was involved in the reaction. To determine the overall reaction, we simply add the elementary steps as given. The fluorine atom cancels, so the overall reaction is fluorine, elemental fluorine F2, plus two ClO2s yields two FClO2s. The reaction intermediate is the fluorine atom because it cancels out when adding the elementary steps. The rate law is dependent on the slow step. It is simply the reactants of the slow step and the exponential on each reactant is the stoichiometric coefficient in the slow step. In this case, there's a 1 in front of the fluorine and the ClO2. So the rate law is R equals K, fluorine concentration raised to the first power, times the ClO2 concentration raised to the first power. Because all reactants were consumed, and there are no chemical species that remain reusable, there is no catalyst in this reaction. This example involves a step at equilibrium. First determine the overall reaction. Proceed as before, adding the two elementary steps. When doing this, the iodine atom cancels, and we're left with I2 plus H2 yields two HIs. Because the iodine atom canceled when adding the two elementary steps, the iodine atom is an intermediate. Determining the rate law for this reaction is a little more complex than the previous example because in the slow step there is an intermediate, the iodine atom, and the initial rate law that we present involves this intermediate iodine atom, but because it's an intermediate it cannot be in the overall rate law for the reaction. Therefore, we need to utilize some math. We'll take advantage of the math related to the equilibrium step. The reaction at equilibrium means that the forward rate of the reaction equals the reverse rate of the reaction. Therefore, the two rate laws for the forward and reverse rates are equal. So we have K forward times I2 is equal to K reverse I squared. We solve for I squared in that equation and we end up with K forward over K reverse times I2. What we'll then do is substitute K forward times I2 over K reverse for I squared in our initial proposed rate law. When doing that, we end up with the rate law is K times H2 times I2. And like before, there is no catalyst involved in this reaction. Now we'll look at how energy diagrams relate to reaction mechanisms. The number of peaks in an energy diagram is indicative of the number of transition states, or so-called activated complex. This is the point in a reaction where bonds are broken and bonds are made. The lulls, if any, in an energy diagram is indicative to the number of intermediates in a reaction. Then, of course, we'll determine if a reaction is endothermic or exothermic by comparing the energy of the reactants and the products. And looking at this first energy diagram, we see that it is an exothermic reaction 
and there is one peak which is indicative of one activated complex or one transition state and based on this energy diagram there are no intermediates. The second energy diagram shows two peaks or two transition states and one lull which is indicative of at least one intermediate. The arrow associated with the first peak is the activation energy for the first transition state. This is associated with the slow step. The third energy diagram shows a similar situation, two transition states and at least one intermediate. The fourth energy diagram shows three transition states and at least two intermediates. The fifth energy diagram is similar to the fourth one. Three transition states and two intermediates and the same with the sixth energy diagram. All of these reactions are exothermic in the forward direction. Here is a pair of energy diagrams showing a decrease in the activation energy due to a catalyst. The catalyst speeds up the reaction by lowering the activation energy. The first energy diagram shows a reaction with one transition state and no intermediates. The reaction pathway with the catalyst also has one transition state and no intermediates. In the second energy diagram, on the other hand, the uncatalyzed reaction has one transition state and no intermediates. But the catalyzed reaction has four transition states and three intermediates.